Hello, I'm Pastor Brenda Peterson and this is Reverend on the Road. Every day, you and I should be preparing for spiritual battle by putting on the full armor of God. It is no wonder that prayer is an essential part of being battle ready. You and I should always fight our battles on our knees before ever attempting to fight those battles in the flesh. Ephesians 6.12 says, For our struggles is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. When we put on the armor of God, we are not just saying that we trust in God. We are showing God that we trust in him, in his word, to guide us and protect us as we travel through this road of life. A number of years ago, Leah and I took a trip from Northern California all the way down to Southern California. And if you've ever taken that trip, you know that there are a couple of routes you can take. One is to take Highway 5. It's pretty much a straight shot from north to south. And there might be traffic, but it's kind of a boring route. Simple. But then there's another route that you could take, and that is State Route Highway 1. It's a beautiful route to take. It just has such wonderful sceneries. It can be so peaceful, yet so treacherous. Route one is a windy road. One side is mountain and the other side is a cliff that goes to the ocean. And as you're driving along, you have to watch those road signs to give you directions on what to do and when to turn. And you have to be aware of the oncoming traffic coming your way. One wrong move on Route 1 can lead to some really disastrous happenings. Yes, Route 1 is beautiful, but it is a dangerous road to travel. And when I think about that trip, I think about life and how life is full of its twists and turns, where it can be quite beautiful, but it can be quite dangerous at times as well. It's full of all these uncertainties. You don't know what's coming next or what's coming at you. Many of us have lived long enough to know that life can have its twists and turns and it can be quite negative at times. Some of us might welcome the opportunity to start over again because somewhere along the lines, we took a wrong turn and le got left somewhere we did not want to be. We veered off the roads, maybe onto the rocks or maybe even driving too close to the cliff's edge. Nevertheless, on Route 1, the roads of our life God has placed signs along our journey, along our path to help us successfully navigate our way along. And if that's the case, and God has given us everything that, that we need to help us navigate through life, then why are there so many stalled vehicles along the road? Why are there so many vehicles with their hoods up, unable to go forward? Why is it that when we look over the cliff and we see the reef, we can see that all those cars that have gone off the cliff? Moreover, the question becomes more bewildering when we find out that so many of those that have stalled along the path or who have fallen off the cliff are Christians. They were unable to navigate the twists and turns of this life. May I suggest that far too many of us as believers believe in a God that we don't trust. 
I suspect that everyone watching today affirms the existence of God. And I would even venture to guess that if you're watching or listening to this, that you probably have already accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And yet, there seems to be this disconnect from our faith in Christ to get us to heaven and our faith in Christ to lead us on the journey of life. There does appear to be a disconnect. And sadly, I, may I suggest that far too many of us do not trust God. It seems almost shocking to hear, but I would venture to guess that it's true. If we're honest with ourselves, we would have to admit to trusting God wholeheartedly for our salvation. But then, when it comes to other areas of our lives, not so much. We hold back. It is this holding back that says, I believe in you, I love in you, but I don't quite trust you. Before Adam and Eve ever ate that fruit in the garden, they had already sinned. They sinned within their hearts. They failed to trust God and his word and his goodness, causing them to act on their own understanding, their own wisdom and desires, leading to disobedience and death. And Jesus tells us that sin of thought is sin itself. It leads us to the action of sin. We've already sinned if we've even thought it. The book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to navigate through life. Wisdom is the ability to discern true nature of a thing and to implement the word of God regarding it. Wisdom is the ability to perceive a true nature of a thing. What's really going on? And then to have the ability to apply or implement the will of God regarding that perception. Some call it the art of skillful living, the ability to effectively apply truth to your everyday decisions. Solomon understood this importance when he prayed, don't give me riches, give me your wisdom. The book of Proverbs opens up with this father's cry for his son and the importance of him gaining wisdom. In fact, it says in chapter 120 of Proverbs that wisdom shouts in the streets, in the public square, she raises her voice. In all the noise of the city streets, in all the business of the world, wisdom shouts out saying, please pay attention to me. Proverbs 133 says regarding wisdom, those who obey me will dwell securely, untroubled by the dread of harm. Over and over again, the scripture tells us to be wise and not be foolish. It instructs us to live our daily lives with godly wisdom. And therefore, the wisest thing we can do is to trust God in are every area of our lives. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says this, trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understandings. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. This passage is very clear. We must trust in God entirely. The word trust is to lay down on or putting one's own complete weight on. Now, I would assume that if you're sitting down right now, you're sitting in some type of a chair and you're trusting in that chair to hold your weight. I assume you're not trying to help the chair hold you up. You're trusting simply in the chair that it will hold you up. And yet, when it comes to God, we seem to try to help God by helping him hold things up. We pray, but instead of putting our whole weight on him, 
we hold back some things and we think we can handle it on our own. Scripture tells us to trust in the Lord with our whole heart, holding nothing back. Seek Him in all circumstances. Trust that no matter how things look from the human perspective, that God has things under control. Tragically, when it comes to navigating our lives, most of us start with ourselves and work our way back to God. In other words, we start with what we think, what our perception is, what our orientation is. And when that doesn't work out, oh, well, then it's let's try God. You know, there would be a whole lot less trouble in life if we started with God and didn't start with the me, myself and I. God has given us unlimited resources to navigate and to protect us through all the twists and turns that life throws at us. And when we do not use his resources or take hold of what he has for us, what he has provided for us, then basically we are essentially telling God we don't trust you. The proof that we do not turn to God, even though we declare that we believe in Him, is that we run to other sources before we run to God. What a person trusts in is where a person will turn. Do you believe that? We can always discover what we trust in by what we do first. In other words, where we believe we can get the help we need to get the answers we need, that is where we first turn. So I ask you, where do you first turn? When needing to solve a problem or overcome adversities or when you need advice, discernment or comfort, when you are worried or fighting with the enemy? Do you fall on your knees or run to your phone? Do you cry out for God's wisdom or someone else's? At the core of our being, no matter what is happening in our lives, we must trust in the Lord and lean not on our own understandings. In trying to keep my dog Baxter safe, I purchased a 50-foot leash and it allows him a sense of freedom to run about. He's just a little Pomeranian, so he has a lot of room to navigate on his own. But at the same time, it allows me to have control over his direction. Most of the time, he listens to my instructions, but there are those times when he does not listen at all. And a few years ago, while we were out Side in the backyard, I had him on that leash and Baxter took off running and he started to run around a tree and get himself tied up around this tree. I tried to stop him and get, you know, to get that t leash untangled, but he would not. He thought I was playing with him. So he just kept running around in circles, tying himself up even tighter, running about in his own direction. The more I said stop, the more he went on until he was just completely tangled up. And then he starts whimpering for help. Of course, Baxter is a dog, but the same can be said with us. God tries to stop us, to get us to listen to him. And we lean on our own understandings in a situation and we go in the opposite direction and we tangle ourselves up to the point where we end up whimpering and crying out for help. Much like the leash that kept Baxter safe, God has placed road signs and guardrails along the road of life to keep us safe. And he says, trust in me. These will keep you from going the wrong way, from falling off the cliff, from following those evil plans. But in our own reasoning, we take off and we do what we want to do, proving that we do not trust in the God we say we believe in. 
Proverbs 28, 26 says, Those who trust in their own reasonings are fools, but those who walk in God's wisdom will be kept safe. There is wisdom that comes from this earth, and there is wisdom that comes from God. When we trust in our own understandings, we trust in the wisdom of this world. And guess where the wisdom of this world comes from? Yep, it comes from the prince of this world, who is the prince of darkness, Satan himself. You might say, but God expects us to use our own brains. And yes, he does. He does indeed. But he also expects us to know him so well that we know what his desires are in any given situation. And to do that, we must trust in his wisdom and in his word and not in ourselves. By not trusting in God, we are putting our trust in the enemy himself. The same enemy that seeks to destroy us. The same enemy that we were warned to stand against. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober and alert. Your enemy, the devil, like a roaring lion, is on the prowl looking for someone to devour. Satan is waiting for us to be engulfed in frustration and turmoil because when we are, we are less apt to turn to God in prayer, less apt to open our Bibles and use God's discernment. He diverts us from our attention on God and he uses our emotions to his benefit. By leaning on our own understandings, we become vulnerable to the devil's tricks. Satan is the father of lies. He introduced doubt into lives just as he introduced doubt in the word of God when he said to Eve, Did God really say? We are told in Ephesians 6.12, Our fight is not against people on earth. We are fighting against the rulers and authorities and the powers of this earth's darkness. We are fighting against the spiritual powers of evil in the heavenly world. Until we acknowledge that Satan is a real enemy, we will continue to fall for his deception. We will never put on the full armor of God and we will continue to doubt God and his word. God has placed the road signs. He has given us unlimited resources to strengthen us, and he has asked us to trust him. But it will be impossible to fully trust God if our ear is leaning to the world's wisdom and not his. Hear me. Where we lean is where our perspectives will be. If we have an earthly perspective, then our prayers will resemble that of the world. We will tell God our problems, our needs, and our desires, and we will tell him how we think he should resolve it. And in the process, we insult God with our ignorance and our arrogance. The fact that we trust in our own understandings is proof that we are not trusting in the God we say we believe in. Again, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understandings. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. We must trust God intimately. Scripture says, in all your ways acknowledge him. That word acknowledge is not some quaint recognition. Like when I walk in the room and you say, you know, hello, how are you today? Or good morning, just as a nicety. No, the word has to do with this intimate response based on knowledge and relationship where pleasing that person becomes our goal. God wants us to seek him and his will in all that we do. In every move we make, 
as we take steps through the day, as we make a decision in our thoughts and in our words and in our acts, the Lord wants us to recognize that He is sovereign and has sovereignty over us. And we need to seek Him for directions. He desires for us to involve Him in every aspect of our lives, in all that we do, our daily activities and our plans. No aspect of our lives must be left to our own. Acknowledging who God is in this relationship we have means that we, reconnect, we recognize that God is God and we are not. And therefore, we acknowledge His authority in what we are doing. Another way to put it is found in Colossians 3.17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. God is saying, when it comes to life's directions and navigating the, the roads of life, He is the source of all our resources. In all things, we need to acknowledge Him, consult with Him, thank Him. We acknowledge Him when we seek Him, when we follow Him, and when we read His Word, when we bow down in prayer daily, morning, noon, night, throughout the day, we just talk to Him. And it amazes me how many people make decisions without ever acknowledging or consulting God. And I've got to admit, I have been guilty of this myself. We come on Sunday mornings to hear a sermon and then we don't apply it to our lives. Oftentimes we say nice sermon on Sunday, but then on Monday we once again fall to the deceptions of this world because we are trying to navigate the twists and turns without acknowledging God. In the Bible, there's a principle about every life situation and decision that we need to make. And when you know your Bible so well, you will know where to find your help. The Word of God is not only quality, it's quantity of contents, and it's all perfect. Everything in the Word of God is true and trustworthy as God Himself. And yet, knowing this, we still make decisions and response to various things based on our own understandings or the world's wisdom. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Some years ago, there was a husband and wife that came in for counseling, and the husband was very upset because his wife goes to other people and asks other people their opinion before coming to him. And he said that when his wife comes to him, um, he doesn't listen. And he said it's not because he doesn't think it's an important subject or it's important to her. It's because she comes to him after everybody else. And you know what? Isn't that how we treat God? We go to everyone else before we consider going to God. God said in Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God says, in all your ways, acknowledge me. Come to me before you go to other people. Consider me before you go after your own understandings because my ways are not your ways, they're not the world's ways. Have you ever lost your keys? 
You've searched everywhere, you're tearing up the house and you just can't seem to find them. And, and you're starting to freak out because maybe you have to go somewhere and you just can't find these keys. And so exhausted and, and you've searched everywhere and you finally say, Lord, please, I need these keys. Help me find these keys. And no sooner do you say that prayer than bing, you remember exactly where those keys are. A few years ago, Lee went to Tennessee, and while he was in Tennessee, there was a man and woman who had stayed in the room he was now occupying the week before. And when this lady got home, she realized she can find her wallet. She searched everywhere, the suitcases, her house, the car, she searched high and low, and she began freaking out. She was ready to call the credit card companies and start canceling the credit cards, and her husband said, let's just pray about this. And they prayed about this, and he said, before you cancel anything, I'm going back to the area, just wait. And so when he gets back to Tennessee, to the hotel, he sees Lee actually leaving the room at that moment. And he asks Lee, would it be okay if I went in and I looked for my wife's wallet? And Lee thought, sure, why not? Uh, he had not seen the wallet, so whatever. But the man went directly in. He, he looked over at that dresser. He moved the dresser and boom, there was the wallet. He knew exactly where to look because when God is on our side, he gives us the information we need. You see, God has given us everything we need to overcome adversities, to fight our battles, and to stand strong even at our weakest moments. All we need to do is trust and acknowledge him and access his resources. One of the most powerful and productive resource we have is God himself. Through prayer, we can have an open door to the Father through the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit. And no matter what is happening in our lives, no matter how big or small, we can ask him for help. God is greater than anything else we are facing. God guides us and protects us and he fights for us. Through his spirit, he is constantly shielding us and strengthening us. We never know how many times the Holy Spirit has whispered in our ear to turn this way or turn that way or to hesitate. And in that process, it has saved our lives. We will never know. But what we do know is we can trust in God. He is trustworthy and he is always on our side. He has given us another very powerful resource. He has given us his word and his words are trustworthy and true. He has given us wisdom and confidence to stand strong in every situation. Ephesians 6, 13 says, Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so when the day of evil comes, you may stand your guard, and after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then. Because, as Proverbs 3, 6 says, he will make our path straight. And he will. He will, meaning that you and I won't have to because God will. We've heard the old saying that the quickest path between two points is a straight line. A path is always connected to a destination. We are going somewhere, or at least we're trying to go somewhere, or we're supposed to be going somewhere. And a lot of folks are just going in circles. They are not going anywhere because they are trying to follow their own path, their own understanding, or using the world's wisdom. Satan will do anything to keep us from moving forward. Have you ever got lost and found yourself just wandering in circles, maybe in a forest or an unfamiliar area? Lee's funny like that because he can be out on the road and he can navigate those roads no problem. But once he gets inside of a building, all of a sudden he loses a sense of direction. And, and there are times when I have wandered around the store with him, just kind of tagging along behind, thinking he's looking for something. And finally I just say, Lee, 
what are you looking for? And he'd say, well, I'm going to the register. <laughs> okay, but you're going to the wrong direction because the register's over there. <laughs> the wrong direction. The idea behind making a path straight was about leveling the road to remove obstacles in order for a traveler to reach their designated goal. Satan has placed so many obstacles in our way. He is trying to thwart God's plans for our lives. But when we trust in the Lord entirely and acknowledge Him intimately, God will make our paths straight. So whatever comes our way, we will be able to navigate the road that God has placed us on. And when we're out and about, laying by the pool or playing a game or at the doctors or standing up to voice our opinion, we will be able to speak with God's wisdom. God wants us to trust in Him entirely. He wants us to, compl to, to completely trust in Him unmixed without being divided. He does not want a non-biblical, non-Christian worldview to be intermingled with His wisdom and, and His Word. There's this parable in Luke 19, and it's about a man who goes far away to another land, but before he leaves, he gives his servants his money, and he says that he will come back, and when he comes back, he wants to see what they have done with the resources he has given them. And so he goes off into a distant country, and he becomes a king. And one day he returns, and he asks his servants, what they have gained with the possessions he has left them. Have you ever caught that part of the story? Jesus says, guys, I am with you now, but then I'm going to leave you. But one day I'm going to come back and I'm going to come back as the king of kings. And I want to see what you have done with the resources that I have left you. Has it ever dawned on you, beloved friends, that God trusts in us more than we trust in Him? God placed His entire kingdom in our care. He gave us life, possessions, influence, time, and talents, and every resource we could ever need, including His Son and His Spirit. And He said, I am going to go away, but I'm coming back. And I know you are going to do something spectacular with the things I have given you for the glory of my kingdom. All he asks in return is that we put our trust in him. He wants us to acknowledge him in all our ways, to consult in him before reaching the to the circumstances of life, to reaching out to the wisdom of this world. He wants us to consult Him first. He wants to make our paths straight. For when we fully trust in the God we say we believe in, we will be able to successfully navigate the twists and turns of this life we are living. And those witnessing us through our words and our actions, we'll see the glory and grace of God through Jesus Christ, His Son. Amen. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. I am so glad you watched today's sermon. I do hope that you continue to follow me and the Word of God, as well as some of the short clips we also put up online and go ahead and subscribe and push that notification bell so you can get all of our messages that we send. God bless you and you have a beautiful day. Bye-bye now.